And uh, if you're just tuning in, don't forget to check out our website, www.billycboxing.com, for all the latest boxing news and all that happy stuff, and to, you know, order my book. But uh, anyway, it's time for Blast from the Past. We shine the spotlight again on fighters from years Rocky past. Marciano, top ranking Joe Lewis is the leading contender. Joe Frazier with a left hook. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Look at that left that hook. Belt that goes to Ray Van It's Blast from the Past on Talking Boxing. And this week's Blast from the Past, which is being sponsored by KOFantasyBoxing.com, features a former world champion and boxing hall of famer, Kid Williams. Now, joining me right now to tell us all about the kid is the kid, kid himself, himself, Alex, Alex Perpally. What's up, man? Good evening, Billy C. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, how about yourself? How about yourself, Deontay? How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Deontay, yeah. Deontay, how yeah. about that chair? That Excuse chair, I, I was wondering what it was. I mean, it was yeah, kind of crazy. Too. I was like, is that USA? I, 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 don't, I, that's, I thought it was USA, too, you know, and they were going, Deontay. Hey, listen, like you said in the chat room, um, you know, I, I was glad that, and, and, and you got to give Wilder a lot of credit um, for uh, uh, actually forming an, uh, an Alabama boxing commission just so he could fight. Uh, in the state of Alabama several years ago, he, he started it. So he's done a lot for the state, so I give him credit for that. But we'll talk about him in a little bit later. Right now, we're talking about Kid Williams. Uh, did Had we done Kid Williams before? Yes, we did, uh, way back in 2011. Uh, oh, okay. December of 2011. Um, but I didn't get a chance to listen to it by the time I got into the pod bean uh, thing. Uh, but I did have... Um, some pretty good notes from them. So hey, this is uh, uh, it, now that we uh, have all of the uh, blasts up on the uh, website. It's a hell of a lot easier, huh? Yeah, yeah, that is cool. It is faster to find them. Yeah, um, <laughs> and there's even cool. pictures of them too. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us cool. about this kid, Williams from Copenhagen, Denmark. That's strange, huh? Yeah, um, this uh, John Gutenko is. Uh, I hope it's Gutenko. Maybe it's. Gatenko, I don't know. Um, John is, uh, that's his real name. Uh, his ring name became Kid Williams. I'll describe why. Uh, he was born December 5th, 1893. So we got another old timer. But some of these old timers, they got great stories. Um, and this is a good one. Um, he was only five foot one and uh, had most of his success as a bantamweight. Um, he, uh, you know, came out of poverty, and Billy C., you know, we love these uh, tough guy newsboys, and <laughs> this was a newsboy. Um, he, um, his family came to the U.S. of A. when he was six, and they settled in the Baltimore, Ma Maryland area, area I'm sorry, um, and uh, he was just this insignificant uh, little guy, uh, you know, selling newspapers, and... Um, he actually, they they called it snitching. Uh, what he would do, and that's how he, he got discovered, actually, by this guy named Sam Harris. He snitched him. Uh, he'd sell him a paper, and the guy would give him a dollar, and he'd owe him a half dollar and change, and he'd take off uh, and not give him the change. Well, Sam Harris, uh, you know, you know he, he ended up catching up to him later on in the day and said, um, you know, you know, you're an athletic, athletic, athletic oh, excuse me, athletic-looking sort of uh, poor newsboy, and Harris actually took him to a diner. It's like this is almost like a scene out of uh, like a Dick Tracy comic or something. He took him to a diner and bought him a coffee and a piece of pie, and uh, Gutenko uh, ate it without even using a knife and fork. He ate it like an animal, and he, uh, he stuffed the food right into his face, and you know he entered him into a boxing tournament. And uh, he attacked his opponent the same way, uh, this guy named Shep Farron. I love these names. And uh, he knocked him out in the fifth round. And after that, uh, they gave Gutenko an American-sounding name, um, and it was Kit Williams. You know, uh, what they do, tie a piece of pie behind... <laughs> 
behind uh, Farron, uh, behind Farron's head, you know, and tell him, hey, go get that, pe- go get that cherry pie. But you know, you look at this guy's uh, record, you know, and, and we always say this, and and I'm sure we'll get to this. You know, he fought for 19 years, so you know, and and all of the uh, during that era too, uh, the bantamweights were uh, were were very good. Uh, but check it out in his 14th fight, he fights. Uh, George K. O. Cheney, which was a, a guy we did a blast on several years back, and and he was no slouch to be fighting in your fourteenth fight. As a matter of fact, he fought him a bunch of times. Yeah, Cheney was a big puncher. Um, he didn't have the best chin in the world, but he um, he did uh, he hit really hard, and he was a rugged guy. Um, yeah, this is another one of those situations where you have him ma- making you know fighting four times in a month, three times in a month, then maybe taking a month off. Uh, and then fighting three, four times again in the next month. I mean, it's just crazy looking at his record. He fights August 1st, August 2nd, August 5th, August 7th, August 15th, 19th. I mean, it's crazy. In 1911, he, fight, he fought uh, one, two, three, four, five, seven times in August. I mean, that's just crazy. Wins them all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this was just another era, and this guy was a really uh, fierce uh, fighter. Um, he had an aggressive attacking style, and he was very popular, of course. Those were the kind of guys that um, people liked to see. Uh, he was a, one of the most terrific hitters in the business. They often retur- referred to him as that. Um, this was a line I liked. Kid Williams is a Dane by birth. He possesses all the ruggedness, stoutness of heart, and endurance that comes with his race. So, you know, they still had those kind of... Um, uh, that that's their version of like hyperbole back then. You know, you know what I don't understand. Here we call him uh, beast mode. But you, you know what I don't understand with him is why do they refer to him as as a puncher, as a hitter, when really, I mean, his knockout ratio was twenty four percent. He fought during an era of newspaper decisions where you weren't really allowed to knock somebody out. Uh, um, he only had uh, forty nine knockouts out of out of over two hundred fights. I mean, how did they come up with with that? I mean, that's he must have he must have beat the snot out of opponents, just didn't drop them. Yeah, I think that must have been it because he threw lots and lots of punches. Um, he he was like one of those kind of um, swarming type of guys. He wasn't uh, um, like a foreman type one punch, or even like a Prince Hamed, uh, or I would even say a George K. O. Cheney is more of a one punch guy. Uh, he was a swarming type of guy, um, and he, you know, he, you can't keep him off you. He just keeps punching, keeps punching. Well, he, he, you know, it seemed that when he wanted to, he would knock you out. But he would, it was, it was more of a, he wasn't a one punch knockout um, no. artist. He was more of an accumulative uh, type of a, a knockout guy. Because if you look at the uh, the title bout that he fought uh, with Johnny Kulan. Uh, he busted him up really bad. I mean, really quickly too. By by the third round, um, uh, you know, this was a guy uh, Kulan that was uh, uh, bleeding from every possible place he could on his face. He was apparently fighting with with fractured ribs and everything, and he just he ended up you know going to sleep. And and that was only the third round. So talk about swarming. He must have. Uh, and again, they must have t- told him that there was a piece of apple pie in it for him. If he, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It, and he was, you know, he was a real murderous body puncher. So definitely, I think that's one of the things that um, uh, that was something also that I, I was something I think would be worth talking about about this weekend. In the difference in some of the fights this weekend was body punching. And uh, back then, I mean, this guy is a consummate pro of that era and. You had to be a body puncher because sometimes you were going a long time and uh, you got to wear the other guy down, you know, um, and body punching is the way to do it. And that's the kind of, um, you know, he'd get in there real close and um, just, you know, swing for that midsection. And you're right. I mean, Johnny Colon was a guy, that I don't think we've ever done a blast on him. We should do one on him. But um, all the way, what was it? It was up to Pete Herman where... He hadn't. Um, he had been pretty dominant uh, up until he fought. Yeah, Pete Cure, Kid Herman, um, and Ke- but he, he, he yeah, fought he, a draw. You're talking about the draw against Petey Herman. Yeah, yeah. He was, was only 21. Point. That was the other thing. He 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 must have started 
you know, as a really young fighter because by the time he was a world champion, he was only 21 years old. And he went on to fight, what, another 12 years after that, 13, 15 years after that? You know, after, you know, he, he won, you know, he wins and loses his title, but it's not really clear when he actually lost it. He, did he fight for more than one title? I know he won a world title. Then he won a title called an IBU world title. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on that myself. How, how, did you find out anything on that? Yeah, the only ones that I see that are um, world, the world title is um, the Bantamweight Championship, and it was the fights with Herman. Um, yeah, those were the only ones. And this, according to Cyber Boxing Zone, the one in, um, there was, uh, well, the, he had the draw in 1915 with um, Frankie Burns, Jersey Frankie Burns. And then in February of 1916, another draw. Uh, that's the first one, a 20-rounder. So, again, you know, you're going 20 rounds with another guy. Body punch is important, you know, to try to uh, gain an advantage. You want to put those punches in the bank. Um, 1916 February, that's a 20-round draw for the Bantamweight Championship of the World. And then in 1917, again, he fought Herman. Another, uh, this was actually the loss. Uh, that's after that fight where he kind of faded. Um that was a 20-round defeat in 1917, and those three were for Bantam, the Bantamweight Championship of the World. Well, the fight, the fight in 1916 uh, against, uh, um, against Herman, uh, where he just, according to every account, basically beat Herman from one end of the ring to the other, and they got the draw. It was a, a huge controversy. But, but if, if, according to the International Boxing Hall of Fame, he lost his title, his official world title, to Johnny Ertl in 1915 on a controversial disqualification. And he never regained it. Although he fought uh, Herman um, those times for, for uh, uh, the title, he never regained his title. That was in, when he lost his title, it was in 1915. He went on to fight till 1929. He continued fighting, you know. So, I mean, it wasn't like... He didn't fight. I mean, he obviously still possessed the talent, you know. Oh, definitely. And some this I see an article here from October of 1917. Uh, so later that year, they still were referring to him as, um, even though he's faded, they still referred to him as a championship fighting machine. So he did, like you're saying, he he, he um, you know he faded uh, from prominence uh, after that defeat, but. Um, he, he, it wasn't like some guys who uh, really flame out. You know, uh, you, you, you mentioned some of the names, and, and I love some of these names from back in that era, but that one caught my eye. You know, there's always one that catches my eye. And, you know, I, I would love to do something on this guy, but I'm sure it would be, sure be very hard to find information. His name, Louisiana. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> that's his name. You know, so I could just see, you know, obviously, I don't know if you got to see that that German fight I was talking about uh, earlier, but, uh, you know, I picture these fights back in the day. Okay, what's your name? Uh, uh, Louisiana. Okay, Louisiana, you're up next, you know. I mean, you know, nothing like we have today. Uh, you know, one of the reasons they, they put federal IDs in, in, uh, uh, in swing is, is because fighters used to go from one town and uh, especially in these eras, you know, go to, in one town and they were fighting as, you know, Joe Schmo. And then the next town they were fighting as Louisiana, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, other fighters would have uh, uh, these uh, wins on their record, uh, four wins against the same guy with four different names, you know. True, true. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I, I would, there is a joke there about a federal ID number for a guy named Louisiana. Uh, you could have a, like a license plate number. Uh, with that kind of a nickname. Um, but, yeah, uh, there are, were some, even while he was not as sharp as he uh, used to be, in, like, 1918, right on to uh, the end of his career in 29, those last 10 years or so, 10, 11 years, he did fight some big names. I mean, uh, he lost, but he had a fight with Pancho Villa, an eight-rounder, and he lost to uh, Frank Gennaro, who was one of the first blasts I think we ever did. Um, and, uh, you know, so these were some good fighters. Uh, what's his name? Earl Perrier was another one that I saw. He's somebody we've never done. Yeah, did he ever fight, uh, uh, the gentleman boxer? I wonder. Mike, my, 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 you know, I don't see him in here. Grim, you know, it was his weight class, his era. 
Yeah. You know? And and you know the the thing is is that when you look at this guy's resume, a lot of things that that do happen with these old time fighters is you see them you know, after they win their title or whatever, and they start to, you know, fade and what have you, you know, you start to see it. It's, it's, their record is a reflection of, of the fading uh, ability level. But like you just said, you don't see that when you look at Kid Williams because all the way up to the last several years, he was still extremely busy and he was still winning fights. The, the worst losing streak he ever had was uh, his last four fights. He lost three of his last four. Other than that, there was no other time in his whole history of his career that he lost three of four fights. Yeah, that is pretty amazing. Um, but they did, it, it's interesting because they did in 29, September 29th of 1929, there was an article in the Atlanta Constitution, the headline, Kid Williams told to quit. Uh, Kid Williams will attempt no more comebacks. The veteran of the ring, once the bantamweight champion of the world, has been ordered by the Maryland Boxing Commission to hang up the gloves for good. Yeah, he tried. He tried because he owed all this money. To, uh, you know, let's get into that. Uh, his after, uh, I, you know, I, I I see a line that said, uh, "Kid Williams uh, entered. He left the ring almost as as poor." As when he entered the ring, which I yeah. find, which I find uh, sad but amazing. You know, like yeah, you said, evidently he was a gambler, and that's one of the things this article goes on to say. It says, lately youngsters just starting in the game have been mauling the veteran about the ring, and the commission refuses to okay any more matches. William was, once was wealthy, but lost his money to gamblers, and has had to attempt several comebacks to make a living. Now he says he will apply for a referee's license. Yeah, they, they, he was a big-time spender. He pissed money away. Um, but he was also ripped off a lot. You know, uh, there was uh, many times when, you know, he didn't get uh, the purse that he was promised. That was a uh, common uh, uh, shenanigans in those days. And, um, you know, when he left the, the ring, he, he basically had a, a hard time uh, holding steady jobs. Uh, he was uh, a drinker, too. He liked to, I mean, this guy did everything that you, you know, you, that, it, that you love to read about. I mean, uh, you know, he, he lived, he was homeless for a while. He was, uh, uh, you know, hitting the bottle. He, he gambled his money. He, he, you know, his home life was a wreck. I mean, uh, um, I'm sure yep. you had a lot of things that you, that, that you enjoyed reading about him. Oh yeah, I mean the uh, the more colorful the story, the more interesting. And he he was one of those type guys who uh, I'm sure that um, you know that's part of that. Those were the guys that the hard living type of guys seem to bring that style into the uh, into the ring. You know, they just sort of put their uh, tuck their chin and start swinging. You know, that's how they went about life as well. Um, but he did after um, boxing. He uh, um, he sold soap. Uh, so you got um, that Tyler Durden uh, element here uh, for Fight Club fans. Uh, sold soap. He drove a taxi cab, and he worked at a uh, Bethlehem Steel Company, um, which must be in Maryland. I'm assuming. You know, uh, I, I, he died at 72. 72. I had 69 that he died. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. huh. I had him. Yeah, I have. I have his. 1963. Yeah, but I have him born in 1893. Huh. Uh, yeah, this is this. I got two obituaries here: one from the Times and one from the Sun. They both say seventy-two. Huh. Um, well, well, yeah. I, I wanted, I, I wanted to ask you this: Have you ever heard of someone being arrested for failure of supporting your wife and children? Uh yeah, that happens now. The uh, deadbeat dad syndrome. Yeah, it's um. Yeah, I guess that's at one point he he was busted for that. Yeah. Yeah, he did time for that. You know, and uh, the deadbeat dads, they go to court, they get held in contempt, and that's, I mean, just ask Antonio Tarver, you know, <laughs> you know right. but, but they're, but they're, you know, these, these guys, uh, you know, uh, this guy couldn't even feed his family, you know, but uh, it doesn't, I couldn't find if, if his wife left him or, or anything like that, but uh, it's a shame, uh, apparently, uh, from what I see, he, uh, he passed away with, with nothing. Yeah, it looks like, according to the obituary, he, I think he's still married, he had two daughters, uh, or was still married when he passed away. So how do you, if you're still married, how, how do you how do you get arrested in due time for not providing well enough for That's your a family? That's a good question. You know, I, I mean, listen, I'm not saying... Check that. 
Oh, may, uh, maybe because maybe because he uh, somebody proved that he was doing he was you know his wife. Yeah, it could maybe they were out of wedlock kids or something. I don't know, but uh, Kid Williams, uh, who'd you put him in with? Yeah, because it says surviving are his wife Agnes and two daughters. So perhaps uh, they were um, that Agnes. She put up a lot, of, put up with a lot. She was a good woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I put him in against Anselmo Moreno. He is not the top ranked bantamweight at BillyCBoxing.com, um, but the guy who is, Juan Carlos Payana, is not in the game. So Anselmo Moreno, and I talked to some of the guys up in um, Canastota, and they said that that is um, one of the issues that um, uh, there are. Um, some of these guys, uh, you know how, uh, especially some of those uh, lighter weight Asian fighters who pop onto the scene with like four fights and then they win a big fight, um, there's sometimes there's a little bit of lag in the updating of the game. Uh, well, well of then, course, I'm talking about the title bout championship boxing game. Right, and the title bout championship boxing game is uh, one of the reasons we do the, these blasts. And, and, you know, the thing about that is uh, I keep hearing from, from the powers that be from the title bout championship computer game is that the new version that's running late right now, the 2015 version, is going to be really, really good. They said that they've uh, made some improvements that are uh, going to be, that you're going to love. You know, so, oh, awesome. Yeah, so we'll oh, be looking cool. forward to that. So to, how did he do against uh, so, uh, Moreno? Yeah, so against Moreno, I put him in one bout first, and interestingly, because he did have a career fight where he um, ended up um, losing on a DQ like that, that's exactly what happened. Um, uh, Moreno won. On a DQ, uh, Williams was DQ'd in the seventh for um, vicious kidney shot, and um, the referee. Uh, so the referee awarded the uh, fight to Moreno. Then I had them fight a hundred times, and they do seem to match up. I don't know pretty well. Uh, well, uh, Kid Williams really dominated. He won 62, lost 23. They drew 15 times. And of those 62 wins, Williams had seven stoppages, uh, seven KOs, and Moreno was able to uh, KO Williams six times. So um, neither one of these guys is really um, a big knockout puncher. Uh, like you were saying during the blast, uh, he's, when he stopped guys, it was by attrition. Yeah, he, he battered them but didn't have that that sledgehammer shot, you know, but, uh, yeah. but busting him up. Uh, you know, I, I kind of I kind of uh, picture him because I didn't find any fights of him. Did you? Uh, you know, I did not. Um, as a matter of fact, he, um, I think it's weird because there are some, yeah, I think maybe because he was so light. I don't know. Well, um, because some of these guys, like Gennaro was popular, but I don't even find that one. Um, well, I, I picture him as a uh, Henry Armstrong type fighter. You know, like, uh, yeah. you know, like just would, uh, you know, the, 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 the quantity of the punches uh, broke his opponents down. But uh, Kid Williams, uh, former world Bantamweight champion, uh, check this out, 98 wins, 49 coming by knockout, 19 losses in which he was only stopped five times in his whole career. He had eight draws. Those were legal decisions. Then they had the newspaper decisions. 62 more wins there. 11 losses, 4 draws. He fought a total of 205 recorded fights that uh, uh, we've been able to uh, track down. 1,703 rounds as a pro with a 24% knockout ratio. He fought for uh, just under 20 years as a professional. He was inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame a while ago, which shows you uh, how good he was. 1996, so uh, uh, I always kind of judge some of these old-time fighters when they got inducted into the Hall of Fame because the International Boxing Hall of Fame uh, has a tendency to put the best of the best in as quickly as possible, especially the old-timers, you know, and now you, you start to see some of these other guys that are finally getting in that maybe uh, were lost in the shuffle, but uh, Kid Williams has been in there for a while, you know, so uh, uh, obviously uh, he's getting the recognition that he deserves, you know. Definitely, definitely. Great job on uh, Kid Williams, as usual, Alex, and uh, I appreciate that. Our blast from the past. Uh, next week, uh, uh, 